Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the QCast. It is Sunday. It is, I guess, Super Bowl Sunday. Obviously, you can tell I'm not interested in uh, dealing with La La Land when there's so many horrific events going on. But the thing that's been laid on my heart, and I want you all to listen to this, is that the ongoing Fukushima nuclear holocaust that's still uh, so horrific in the ramifications of what it's doing not only to the sea life in the entire Pacific Ocean along the coasts of the United States down into Latin America, South America, but all the cases of thyroid cancer and all of the different uh, mutagenic, which means the uh, uh, mutant-causing effects even in children along the West Coast. Now, why I'm really excited to uh, uh, and excited is not the good word. Why I'm really exasperated to have to bring this up today is the fact is, is that the entire dialogue coming from Fukushima has been a lie. It is probably the most, uh, most detrimental and dangerous environmental disaster of all time. There are those that absolutely believe it was generated uh, if you can go back to Sam Cohen, the former defense secretary, the ability to generate everything from earthquakes to tsunamis is a given. Even on YouTube, there's a fabulous uh, video, and I'm trying to think when it was, but anyway, it shows like blue beams going into the heart of the reactor. Now, whether you believe a neutron flux or not, in essence, what, what it indicates is somebody, even after generating the tsunami, or the earthquake that generated the tsunami wasn't satisfied with that, so they had to go and basically kick in a little extra help. Now, when this thing started, and it was back on, and now here's what's interesting, March 11-11, notice that, double 11s. You know, I am astonished, again, that people who even discuss Fukushima are automatically labeled, obviously you know the word, conspiracy theorists. Yet, ladies and gentlemen, excuse me, something as horrific as Chernobyl that got worldwide ongoing coverage doesn't even match what's going on in the different areas of uh, nuclear meltdown that's taking place on Japan's coast. And today I put up an article on my website talking about a flashback that Fukushima, now notice these numbers, is 33,000 times more radioactive, or there's that many, 33,000 times the level of radiation that Chernobyl, after it was covered in concrete. I want you to ask yourself the question, who has the most to gain by covering this up? I.e., the answer is the New World or the New World Order, or the New World Order, and the globalists. And what's perplexing is the fact for so many uh, uh, years now they've denied that the reactor cores had melted through and today we're seeing massive amounts of uh, stories now being released so many so that it's tough for anybody to deny it any longer. So if you think the greatest environmental disaster in history would not be even given any consideration why would you expect the truth to ever come out of the mainstream media? I maintain that when history or when the uh, books of uh, responsibility are opened and blame gets laid at the source, people will have no reason to, to basically say, we didn't know. Every time there's a new series of events where whales are beaching or, or jellyfish or uh, the plankton are dying or the sardines are dying or the lowest rungs on the ocean's food chain are being uh, uh, basically just mass death, there's always somebody out there to say, oh, it's just those conspiracy guys. Well, I'm telling you this. It's no bloody conspiracy when you've got the amount of dead sea life that's never been experienced before. You've got the amount of uh, dying mammals like they've never been seen before. The records of thyroid cancer and also even mutations in Japan in the immediate area of vegetables and also animals is taking place, not to mention all the little kids that are being born with uh, severe disabilities and also er premature death. Now, what's perplexing also 
is that you cannot get away from the fact that all the used nuclear fuel rods uh, that should have been removed were not removed from Fukushima. And so the robots can't even go in to the hot zone because it shuts down all their systems. And, and I want everybody to go and look at the, uh, the story I linked to on just the basics of radiation. I just tested. I live in Bozeman, Montana. And a few minutes ago, I just text, tested uh, my meter. And we're at 0.22 millisieverts, okay? And there's 1,000 millisieverts to a sievert. And this thing is kicking out 530 sieverts an hour. Well, just so you know, if you get five sieverts, that's considered uh, almost guaranteed that you're going to be dealing with more than a lethal dose of 50. Lethal lethal dose of 50 means 50% of the population exposed to a given amount of radiation is going to die. Now, again, what's fascinating is according to Reuters, I'm reading some of this stuff because I want you to get the full effect of all these facts the combined amount of cesium-137 contained in those nuclear fuel rods is 14,000 times greater than what was released when the U.S. dropped the atomic bombs in Hiroshima at the end of World War II. And other estimates put it much higher. Now, I want to share something. If you don't believe we sow what we reap, we obviously hit Fukushima and Nagasaki with nuclear weapons. And now the peaceful use of the very technology that we uh, introduced into Japan after the war to make them energy independent is being used against us. Boy, talk about, uh, in retrospect, the idea of just radioactive water going into the Pacific is not the main point. The main point, and this is what's critical, is that there's plutonium. And look up plutonium. Different uh, isotopes of plutonium and uranium have different half-lives. And when you're dealing with what happened in Fukushima, you're dealing with a whole different uh, realm of nuclear physics with MOX uh, reactors, in essence, uh, uh, breeder reactors that actually produce plutonium. So when we're dealing with the idea that any truth is going to come out of the mainstream media, I go back to the fact that it has been the desire of the globalists to kill, okay, to murder, to slaughter, to do away with literally billions of people. And, uh, and some people just don't, uh, I, I can't embrace that. And if you've got the most rich and powerful and famous people uh, obviously pushing for global vaccinations, if you've got people uh, just basically covering up the press because six major corporations own them, if you've got what you've been seeing in the recent headlines of the press uh, systematically trying to undermine uh, the current uh, president of the United States, Donald Trump, and if you've got them denying every single connection to a communist overthrow or an attempted communist overthrow of the United States government, why would you ever expect that anyone would tell you the truth? Now, as one of the founders of the, quote, uh, preparedness mindset, the businesses. Uh, I've been in the food canning business. I've been in the uh, selling all kinds of cool stuff for survival. And what's imperative that everyone understands is there's a little statement called food first. If you go into the newspapers of Europe, they're running out of vegetables or just being priced out of the uh, stratosphere. The amount of radioactivity that's being released out of uh, Fukushima is also being carried around the world still in the upper atmosphere. Fallout literally means that after a certain amount of time, radioactive particulate matter begins to fall out of the atmosphere if it's carried into the jet stream or carried into the uh, winds aloft, it will fall out. But that, that fallout is still radioactive. No one ever wants to talk about the P word, not the P word that Madonna and her, uh, you know, uh, what purple headed women and strange looking hats. But what we're talking about is, again, the plutonium. Everybody focuses on cesium-137 bad enough. But when you're dealing with the issue of ingested cesium, in other words, you're eating this stuff, you're drinking this stuff, or you're, uh, you know, uh, breathing this stuff, ingested radionuclides have a whole different uh, mortality than just the exposure to the gamma or the beta radiation that comes off, beta and gamma, gamma being the worst. So when, when 
we're talking about 20 to 40 trillion becquerels of radioactive tritium that have gotten into the Pacific Oceans since the Fukushima disaster first began. And what's astonishing, we've got the classic manifestation of radiation poisoning in the fish. They're bleeding from their gills, bellies, and eyeballs, yet no one will make the simple A plus B equals C. Or in this case, A plus B doesn't equal C because everybody's bloody blind. 150 former sailors and Marines say that they now have radiation sickness as a result of serving on U.S. Navy ships near Fukushima, and they are suing for damages. The military moved in, if you remember, I think it was aircraft carrier, one or two, and a couple other ships. And then after the extent of the damage, they moved further away, but they were in the hot zone for a number of days. And this is what's critical. Iodine-131, cesium-137, strontium-90. And remember in the old days of the uh, above-surface testing and the ocean testing, everybody was talking about strontium-90. But what is problematic is, is that those of us in the Northern Hemisphere are going to be especially especially subjected to that. Now, this is why the old days when a lot of prep companies were telling you to get potassium iodate, uh, telling you to get the different uh, iodine derivatives, because iodine-131 uh, can be ingested in the th thyroid where it emits beta particles that damage tissue. And when you start damaging the thyroid, uh, it's it's really, it messes with the entire endocrine system, and it can stop physical and mental growth, and ancillary ailments, including cancer, especially lung cancer, become problematic. Now, the cesium-137 from Fukushima has been found in fish caught, as, you know, caught all the way down to California now, by the way. Uh, it spreads throughout the body, cesium-137, sp spreading throughout the body, but needs to uh, uh, pretty much accumulate in the muscles. And strontium-90's half-life is around 29 years, and it mimics calcium and goes to your bones. Well, this is one time when it's truly bad to the bone. I won't attempt to sing that song, but I will tell you, it is bad to the bone. By the way, I'm reading from an excellent article that Michael Snyder laid out, and I think it was almost three or four years ago. So for the record, March, you know, we're talking March 11-11, coming up on the sixth year of 2011, we're, we're, we're going to be in a unusual situation to see what breaks loose. And these people, the occultists, have... Uh, have their, if you will, their magic tied to numbers, and they move basically in realms of uh, number sequence. Uh, it's believed, listen to this, that the cesium levels at this point are somewhere anywhere from 20 to 40 times the level they were after the heavy atomic bomb testing in the Pacific after World War II. And when we see the endless release in the Pacific Ocean that will be ongoing for our lifetime, but our children's lifetimes, we have 40 million people alone in Tokyo that are having issues. I once maintained, I don't know if, uh, if it will be, but at some point, should we have a major, major volcanic eruption around Mount Fuji, I don't. I can't even begin to tell you what my concerns would be beyond the obvious collateral damage from lava, ash, etc. But what every day that this thing continues on, we should understand that the entire west coast of the United States and up into Alaska, down all the way into uh, South America, obviously Latin America, on the western, western side of the Pacific is becoming more and more uh, at risk of very, very dangerous and damaging uh, uh, ramifications in the pe bodies of the people. So what am I saying we should do? Number one, stay on this Fukushima thing. It is, it, it, like I said, for the last couple of days, I'm trying to follow uh, the direction of leading in my heart that I think is critical at this point. And when I start seeing so many lies clustering, that tells me that the mainstream press or that, let's just say this, the control press is trying to do damage control in anticipation of some really bad news coming out. Really bad news. 
we're talking about areas now that are going to be the DZs, the dead zones of the Pacific Ocean. We're talking about areas in, in literally Japan had this, uh, how do I say this? If the same standards were applied that were applied to Chernobyl, go look on a, do an internet search and see how closed down and, uh, literally it's a no go zone going into Chernobyl. And you're talking about something in Fukushima that's 33,000 times more radiation. And people just kind of go, so what? Now, you can say, well, you're not saying so what, but what can you do about it? Number one, you hold your representatives accountable. Hopefully, with the new um, the new president, the new cabinet, people begin to see how this is. Now, I want to share something. There was a gentleman who developed a form of what would be called photoremediation of uh, nuclear uh, fission or nuclear uh, byproduct breakdown. He was murdered. He had a company in, I think, Boise, Idaho. And I used to know his name because I used to talk about him all the time. But there are ways of neutralizing radiation known to the inner circle. But why would they neutralize? Again, I want to say that word, um, photoremediation. And if people don't think it uh, isn't a big deal, then ask yourself, who has the most to gain by killing the guy that came up with probably one of the most brilliant ways to uh, render active radioactive particles, um, just basically neutralize them? So the whole the the reality of what is happening is that it's planetary in scope. Getting back to all the most powerful men, the richest men. Remember, these are the people that want everybody else but them dead. And they're being generous, you know. They want to leave about 500 million people, obviously Georgia Guidestones, but everybody who is a population control freak is wanting uh, the acceleration of people just simply die. Because, ladies and gentlemen, they're the elite. They want to be, so many of them want to be gods, yet you're an, a useless eater. And by the way, if you understand that what is happening now in the northern hemisphere as well as the southern hemisphere, those of you who have ever been to Mallorca, Spain, or even into uh, the Sahara Desert, when they got snow there, they got problems. When you're seeing snow in uh, uh, Australia, when you're seeing uh, uh, snow throughout uh, Southeast Asia, when you're seeing, uh, uh, if you will, anomalies that are off the chart because there were no charts capable of literally pinpointing the amount of damage being done. And so I want you to really pay attention to those articles I'm putting up on Fukushima and especially on the remediation because one of the things you're going to have to move, and I'm saying this, at what level, here's a question I'm going to pose to everybody who lives from Seattle down to the Baja. And you send me an email. And, and seriously, I, I'm being as, as uh, gently persuasive as I know how to be. At what level will you decide that you, and I, that you can no longer stay on the coast? At what level? Go and look up, uh, you know, exposure levels to radiation. And look up, you know, that some of this stuff is 530 uh, sieverts, not millisieverts, uh, uh, sieverts uh, 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 an hour. And the thing is, is if you look at, I mean, lethal dose over a lifetime, I think most of the charts are 275, and that's over your lifetime. I mean, if you were exposed to just, you know, a thousandth of this, They'd be treating you for radiation sickness. So that's why the fish are bleeding. Well, that's why they're uh, uh, being uh, mutated. That's why everything's beaching. That's why they're dying. The food chain is interrupted. And ladies and gentlemen, when the plankton goes and when the sardines go all the way up the food uh, ladder and the ocean, everything goes. And when the food goes, we go. So please, that's something that I really want you to consider. Uh, again, this is Sunday. And we're talking about the very things going on in the oceans of the world. And when we're recorded in history, and by the way, Southern Hemisphere is not going to escape this. When history looks back or even the judgment books are opened, if you ever have heard the statement that I used to coin on the talk, I, or I think I coined it on their talk radio, I, I, I know I did, dumb unto death. Now we're going to have to move to even a, uh, a little stronger wording, denial unto destruction. 
slash yours. If somebody says this is a um, conspiracy theory, fear-mongering, ask them to go tell you what the lethal dose of radiation is. Ask them to give you the background on Chernobyl. Ask them to give you the background on, obviously, the cover-up and cover-over of what's been going on with the amount of radiation and also the core of the reactors uh, melting through. They've known it for a long time. So where it's becoming more and more problematic. Now I'm going to basically jump to something that if you understand starvation and with the, I think, and I, I'll stand correct on this, but I think 60 to 70 percent of the world's population live around the coast and are dependent on the, the coastal food supply for their major protein sustenance. If you look back at Mount Tambora, T-A-M-B-O-R-A, and when it exploded with supposedly the, la the largest recorded explosion in volcano history, all the ash that went in, up into the upper atmosphere was distributed throughout the northern hemisphere so that it began, it began really getting cold. And during that time period, obviously, uh, Mary Shelley wrote her book, Frankenstein, the Monster. Uh, there were so many events happening during that time period. But the bottom line was the people that had food or had money could eat, not on the same uh, level they used to be able to, but so many people starved and so many people died. You've got to ask yourself this. Begin to make a list. I'm serious. Get a yellow pad or, you know, I mean, I got multiple pads. I got every color pad in the world. I write, you know, a lot of stuff on them. I throw them on the floor and then I go back and remember that my stuff for this was on this pile or that pile until you come in and walk into my floor and you slip, you know, because it's like skating on ice because you're skating on paper. Then you decide, hey, it's a good time to pick it up. By the way, I had somebody come to my store from, I don't know, Michigan or Minnesota, and they said, can I see your office? And I said, sure. They said, do you really keep your files like that? They said, yeah. And I took them by hallway down to my office, and they just couldn't believe it. They, you really do that? I said, yeah. And actually, I guess I should do it, uh, clean it up more because all it takes is one slip, and you know, it forces me a little, if you will, humor. But that's really the case. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think six volcanoes have come active today, uh, and these are not just uh, dormant ones that are all of a sudden springing to life, but. If somebody's out there that has the ability to calculate, do advanced math, I would like you. I would like to propose this. I'll give you all the credit. I'll bring you on a radio show or, or a, a, a podcast, Skype, whatever. And I'd like you to calculate the amount of cubic, uh, if you will, the cubic feet of ejecta going into the upper atmosphere. I mean, when you've got like uh, Kamchatka Peninsula volcanoes, I mean, they're ejecting ash into the upper atmosphere, sometimes five miles, sometimes six miles, I think uh, eight miles high. The, 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 the cumulative effect of that, it all goes up into the upper atmosphere, and depending on the winds aloft, is carried around the world. It is my contention that the global warming liars will never talk about that because, again— don't confuse them with history. Don't confuse them with the truth, meaning us. You know, just give them the lies. And here's another statement. When you buy the lie, you're going to die. I'm as surprised and uh, antagonized by people that can never answer the question, why is denial a good thing in the face of evidence to the contrary? Well, I believe that those of you that are listening to this uh, QCast and will share it with your friends, tell them this. In the, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the most important thing you can do is remember that Esau sold his birthright for uh, something to eat. And I won't even go into details on this podcast of what the history of starvation. Women sell everything. I don't know if most people even know this, but during the Great Depression in the United States, people were selling their children to childless couples because they simply couldn't feed them. I think there's some photos in the last week uh, on some subject, or excuse me, some uh, photos of the Great Depression showing this. Please understand... It's double F's. No, not that. It's food first, food first, food first, triple F's, quadruple F's, food first. 
as Hawk says, if it's a simple can of uh, beef soup. Now, I understand not everybody can, you know, stomach uh, 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 whatever soup brands are out there, but the alternative is worse. You don't even begin to think about anything else until you have a basic understanding of food. And ladies and gentlemen, again, I would encourage you to ponder this. Those of you who are capable of leaving and uh, uh, getting out of where you're at, I, I recommend you go to uh, my website, stevequail.com, and trying to remember where it's at. On the right-hand side, my uh, Ozark homestead, it's literally to the right, right off uh, the right side of my page. And look there, there's a group of people that are putting together communities that have small houses, I mean nice houses, they're just small in size, but also bunker space. Again, you see the billionaires have bailed out to New Zealand. You see the millionaires are bailing out into their million-plus condos. This is something that the average family can do. Why do I believe in it? Am I pushing it? By the way, I have no financial uh, ties to them. I only basically put their ad on my website. The important thing is this. If you don't move now, what makes you think you can move later? Again, I want those of you to send me who live on the West Coast from Seattle, even into Canada, even into Alaska. And Alaska is nice because at least you can go into the, you know, the bush if you can. Same thing with uh, uh, different areas. And you can monitor the, uh, uh, if you will, the uh, dispersion of radioactivity by watching reports and stuff. But even then, whenever there's a surge in radiation, that's taken down also. Everything is designed in modern mainstream vomit brokering to keep the truth out of you. So here's the deal. Email me, steve777 at stevequail.com, and tell me, if you live on the West Coast, even in the South America on the West Coast, at what level, what is it that you're waiting for? I'm not going to make fun of you. That's not the point. I, I got to get the, my understanding here. At what level radiation or what event will you have to uh, basically support your decision to move? And if you think about, well, I got a job and stuff, then pray about getting a job someplace else. But I would like to hear from you. Well, listen, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today to uh, the QCast. Again, we'll get this up as fast as we can. But pay attention. If I put for information or background stories on my website, sometimes I won't say anything because I don't want them to pull them off. I'm getting stories that I place on my website pulled off by guess who? You know, uh, there's 26 letters in the alphabet, and I ended up dealing with primarily three of them all the time. So if you would be so kind, ladies and gentlemen, please start thinking about this. It's more about your family than it is you, but what a great time to be alive and to be able to witness to the Word of God coming to pass as the days of the book of Revelation are, the pages are opening up, and the I guess you would say John the Revelator is, is raising the revelation this time. I believe God is granting unusual grace to understand it. It's not a metaphor. It's not just a bunch of stories. It's incredibly important. Uh, next update as it comes, but probably Tuesday. Thanks again. Bye-bye.